Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm going to start my reaction to the Rupan series. This is episode number one and two, Rupan three uh, reaction from season one. Uh, and also I'm going to react to the pilot film as well, which I'll do at the beginning and then I'll react to episode one and two. All will be in the same video. So if you guys are new to my channel, those who are new to my channel, um, welcome. I'm going to talk at the beginning. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I plan on doing this season one. I'll react completely. Then I'll be asking people in the comment section what episodes of season two and season three they want me to reaction uh, react to. Uh, every person can like, you know, uh, uh, suggest one or two episodes not more than that otherwise you know like the amount will increase a lot and i won't be able to complete and i'm doing this because season two and season three like you know if combined has like um i think like 200 250 episodes or something like that i don't remember but it's huge and unfortunately i won't be able to like you know react to so many episodes so i'll do season two and three like that after that ends i'll uh, resume with season four five and six and after all that ends i'll do more tv specials and stuff so yeah that's how i'm going to do this and uh, yeah so every week i'll be reacting to two episodes in one video and that's i'm how i'm going to do uh the reactions every week same day and i'll try to keep the time the same as well so that's it that's all of that is out of the way so first i'll react to the pilot film here um i think i chose the correct one there are two versions of this um i think i chose the second one which is the remastered version i think so i'm not sure if this is it but most probably this is it as i like you know i kind of tried to search the correct one and i think the one that i'm going to react to here is the latest like you know it's a newer one that is in i think 1978 or something that it came out but anyways, um, let's react to this first and then I'll start with episode 1 and 2. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. And uh, as always, I'll be like, doing it in a timer way, timer version. Uh, the video will be blurred, so be sure to sync your timer to the video that you're playing. And uh, play uh, the video alongside my reaction. Uh, because obviously YouTube copyright. <laughs> So anyways, um, yeah, let's get started. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started with this video. So here we go, the pilot film. Oh, okay, uh, I forgot the countdown. Here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. <coughs> this is old, this is very old. So, okay. Whoa, who is this? The report relating to Rupan 3, the token. Is that Zenigata? I think so. Is that Rupan's voice? Oh, the voice actor changed, I remember. Yeah, the voice actors all are different. They're playing Shogi on the phone. Fake. <laughs> Rupan three. <laughs> Zenigata Hazen. <laughs> They're trying to trace the call. Oh no, I think that's Rupan. I think that's Rupan in disguise. Oh no, never mind. I thought that was Rupan in disguise. Ah. Well, better luck next time. <laughs> I 
<laughs> he returned the piece. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wait, he went back so quickly? <laughs> Grandson. Damn. Oh. Three hundred damn. Whoa, what's wait, who's this? Damn. Oh, Rupan was on top of, okay. Wait a minute, whose car is that? Oh, damn. What? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn. That's any guy. No, that's um, Jigan, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, that's Jigan. Oh, damn. 0.3 second. Wow. Okay. Oh, damn, someone was else. <laughs> oh. All right. But who, who, but who? Okay, Fujiko. Mysterious woman who appears. Oh, so no one knows where she came. Whoa. Damn. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> okay. Damn. Oh my. <laughs>
Okay. Hmm. Well. <laughs> it's Rupan, obviously. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. Why would Goemon do it? Like... Like, no, he obviously he won't do it. He's a samurai. Damn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lonely man. <laughs> Yeah, obviously he won't tr poison Rupan, like, that's not his style. <laughs> Kokoro Achi... Kokoro, oh! Just sitting there. Up. Ah. Damn. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, Zenigata is here. Oh, nice. <laughs> no. Uh, well, not for him. I think this, this is Rup. <laughs> Yep, that is Rupan. Oh wait, no. Oh, okay, no, that is a doll or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh damn. Wait, who? My God. <clears throat> but Rupan is already gone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Wait, so he took two disguises. So where's Kobaro? Oh my god. Oh my god, there he is. <laughs> Wait, where were you when he was disguising as you?
<laughs> wow. Oh, that is all about it. <laughs> okay, that was nice. Is that it? Yep, that was it. Okay, good. All right. Um, so a few more, more information we can I can at least I kind of got that is uh I got to meet a new character. I don't remember if they actually introduced this character in the movies. I don't think they have Kogoro. Now, one thing um I think uh Kogo like I I kind of noticed like obviously like you know Rupan kind of um takes names from you know like people who kind of existed before for example rupan arsene rupan um uh, ishka goemon ishka goemon the gentleman thief um i don't know if fujiko's name is taken from someone um uh jigen daisuke is, is that name taken from some i'm not sure about that as well but kokoro uh, Katsura uh, Kogoro, if he, uh, like you know, he's like one of the characters who existed. Uh, you know, Katsura Kogoro, and um, is that where this guy's name is taken from? I think so. And um, like obviously, Katsura, we are kind of like you know, in anime, we have seen Katsura in Gintama, you know, uh, Gintama, uh, where there's Katsura, and you know, like <laughs> we know Katsura, Zura, so. Like that Katsura, his, I think his actual name is Kido Takayoshi. Yeah. Uh, he was born Wada Kogoro. Okay, he is also known as Katsura Kogoro. Yeah, so I'm guessing uh, Kogoro's name is taken from Katsura Kogoro. And also, like, obviously, like, you know, he kind of said, uh, referred to himself as a detective. Now I wonder. Obviously, Detective Conan came out uh, after Rupan, so I'm 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 kind of wondering. Did they like you know decide to uh, like you know like Kogoro? We know uh, Mori Kogoro from Detective Conan. So I'm wondering, did they actually get, take like you know like was able to? Uh, I don't know. Like, did they name him Kogoro because you know like uh, in Rupan there is a detective called Kogoro. That's why they kind of did that there as well. It'll be interesting because as, as far as I can remember, um, Rupan's creator, uh, not Rupan, sorry, um, Detective Conan's creator, Gosho Aoyama, I think that's his name, is, uh, I think there's, there's somewhere I've read that he, he was kind of like a fan of Rupan. So it won't surprise me if, you know, because, you know, of this character, uh, Kogoro in Rupan, and he's a detective, he, like, you know, he kind of got inspired to make uh, name the character Mori Kogoro as Mori Kogoro because he's also a detective so it won't surprise me but anyways that's something that I'm just I was just thinking and anyway, okay so here we kind of get introduced to all the different characters obviously the voice actors are completely different um and like what else we get to see the main characters here a little bit information about them they kind of give us and um we also see that the goemon is a little bit antagonistic towards rupan he wants to defeat him and which i think we also kind of saw in um, ishikawa's uh, goemon spray of blood because that also was happening chronologically a lot earlier remember that scene where he said something like uh, i will uh, de defeat rupan and then obviously the hawk comes in in uh, in that movie and he starts fighting with hawk but like you know so that's kind of like you know shows that at this time at the prior uh, like you know uh, before they became good friends uh, goemon was kind of against rupan and he wanted to defeat him or something so yeah that was that like i was kind of i, I thought like they, this movie is probably going to show that how they met but i think that that's going that's in some other yeah probably some other episode or something because i know like in uh uh the woman named fujiko uh, mine fujiko there we actually meet fujiko for the first time 
I think so. I'm not sure. So we meet Fujiko in that um, anime series. So I wonder if there's any any episode or any anime where they actually show us how Rupan and Jigen met, or Rupan and and Goemon met. Is there any anime series where they show us that? But anyways, um, yeah. Yeah, that was it. They kind of get us introduced to all these different characters. It was a fun little uh, introduction. And yeah, this is the start of Rupan. Technically, this is not the start of Rupan because this is like a remastered version of the pilot uh, movie, a pilot film. But the previous one was like, you know, the original pilot film is the start of Rupan. So yeah, okay, that was um, <coughs> the pilot film. Now, I'm going to start episode 1 of season 1 of Rupan. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So, this is episode 1 of Rupan 3 season 1. I'll be putting in the subtitles and the time right here. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. And as always, after reacting to it, I'll do a little discussion, then I'll start episode 2. So, here's the countdown. 3, 2, 1. Okay. Sadhana Uta. Oh, is this the opening? It's in English. Interesting. Like, they're calling him Lupan, not Rupan. Like, uh, this is another funny thing, like, not funny, but uh, interesting thing that I read somewhere is that at the beginning they called him Lupin or Lupin. But because of some copyright, like, you know, like problems and everything, they changed his name's pronunciation to Rupin, not Lupin. Because, you know, Arsene Lupin and the copyright problems that they have. I think I read that somewhere. That's why, you know, like in the anime, they call him Rupan, not Lupin. And obviously in Japan, L and R has like a, uh, you know, like similar type of a use, like L and R. All right, let's see. Oh. Okay, this is a race. What is it doing? <laughs> okay, who was he working for? Probably. Hmm. Birds are chirping a tune. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Hotel Miracle. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's why he called so many. Okay. But does he know that Fujiko is on? Yep. Oh boy. Oh. Well, is Rupan Rupan wa moite ka? Is Rupan burning? Okay. Um. Okay. <laughs> All right. Huh. 
Oh great, here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. Why is Rupan uh, in the racetrack? Like, I wonder what his plan is. Oh, damn. Oh. Um, I don't think, th yeah. <laughs> Rupan Empire. Oh boy. Wow, so mature. <clears throat> well, all right. Okay. All right. Wait, he didn't realize that Fujiko got... Oh, I guess, obviously, how will he? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, someone's... Yep. What? Why the hell? Why did the music change suddenly? Oh! Okay, well, um... <laughs> Okay, that's why the music changed. <laughs> oh my god. Damn, I'm impressed. Zenigata is not screaming out. Rupan, Rupan. Usually he... Whenever he sees Zupan, he's so... Zenigata Heiji. I need to check out. I think that's... That's probably some person. Z
Ok. You pointed the execution plan. All right. Oh boy. Oh! Damn. All right, let's see how Dupan goes past this. Oh damn, oh! Okay. All right, recovered. What happened to Zenigata? All right. Oh, logs. <laughs> okay, there you go. Oh, oh, Zenigata stopped. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> oh, they're going to switch or that's why them. Okay. Okay. They're going to switch. Let's see. Oh! Oh, here we go. Nice! Wow, that was cool. And that was smooth. Okay. All right. <laughs> Plumbing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Is, is something have they hidden something here or <coughs> okay oh Oh, wow. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. What is he planning on doing here?
Oh, great. <laughs> wow. What type of weird? <laughs> My God, this guy. Okay. Well, here we go. Um, <laughs> they were like, oh, someone is outside, but little did they know it's water. Oh my God. <laughs> well. <laughs> True. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. You're going to get electrified before you can shoot. <coughs> oh my god. Oh! Well? Okay, do fun. Oh my god. Well. Zenigata is still... The Zen... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Damn. Okay. Okay, there is Zenigata. I was like... Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, w w is something going to happen? Like, there is there a bomb or something? Oh no, not a bomb. They, they were actually okay. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. <coughs> well. Whoa, what? Are those magnets? No. There you go. Rupan wins. <coughs> Wait, what were those that he attached? Were those transmitters? <laughs> oh, they were playing. Okay. Okay, something's inside that trophy or whatever. Here we go.
<laughs> well, no use. Yeah, th those are magnets, I think, or something. Like, what were those? Or were there's, or was it? Were those bombs? Oh, those are bombs. Okay. <laughs> I thought those were magnets, but never mind. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, whoa, whoa. Well, there you go. Everything's going down. <laughs> Great. Damn. <laughs> the chaos. <laughs> oh my god Fujiko well technically he did but oh, oh boy <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Wait, really? Oh my god. Is there like some kind of like yeah, it's warrant, yeah. Well, so that was her plan from the beginning. Ah. <laughs> True. Okay. Zenigata, look behind you. Well, is he? Did he somehow get inside the car? Yep. Oh my god. Wait, what happened to Jigen? <coughs> okay, that's the end, I think. Alright, um... <coughs> okay. Wait, just a sec, um... W they're showing the preview, that's why I stopped it. Um, is there an ending? Let me check. Okay, here it is. Um, it's kind of weird, like they're showing the uh, preview before the ending. But anyways, okay, let's see the let's let's hear the ending. <coughs> is this Fujiko on the bike? Hmm. 
Una volta. Okay, that is it. All right, that was a nice song. All right. Um, okay. First of all, before I forget, I need to search something. Uh, I think Zenji Zenigata is that. Is that what? No. What was it? Um, just a sec. All right. Here it is. I found it. Um, Zenigata Heiji. Um, so this is a, a fictional character, the hero of a series of Japanese novels, films, and TV programs set in the Edo period of Japanese history. He's a policeman, okay, uh, who catches criminals by throwing coins. The zeni of the title, the Zenigata Heiji, the hero was created by novelist Kodo Nomura. In 1931, Heiji's beat is Myonshita beneath the Myojin shrine. Okay, um, <clears throat> so this is Zenigata Heiji. So, just like how Arsene Rupan is the grandfather of Rupan in, uh, in this show, uh, Zenigata Heiji is the dad, I think. Yeah, dad of uh, Zenigata. <coughs> mm. Yeah, so, like, that's why, like, uh, so, it's also another, like, a fictional character who kind of, I guess um, is a part of Japanese uh, f uh, novels and fiction and they just like how Arsene Rupan is another fictional character yeah so that's why and since uh, Zenigata Heiji is like a police officer that's why probably Zenigata in this episode was saying something like oh it's the blood you know because <coughs> Arsene Rupan <coughs> the thief and <coughs> Zenigata Heiji <coughs> the police officer So yeah, that's why. So I was kind of thinking about it. Like, is <clears throat> is uh, Zenigata based on a character who kind of exists in the real world? It did not exist, obviously, but it's a, it is a fictional character, just like Arsene Rupan was. Uh, so yeah, okay. So this episode, the first episode of Rupan uh, season one, and <clears throat> we see here as always, Rupan is. Mm, you know in in the middle of a uh, race and we can see that uh, Jigen and uh, Fujiko is already there with him and Goemon is not here I'm sure we're going to meet, meet Goemon later on or maybe he's somewhere completely different but <clears throat> yeah so um here just like we always see Fujiko tries to get in because of her separate agenda something we still did not know what her agenda was here at the beginning but she gets in and as like you know usually she kind of tries to get like you know probably some treasure or money or something but this time it was a little bit different which is kind of revealed at the end that it was actually the arrest warrant that Zenigata had on Fujiko so I'm guessing probably Fujiko got captured by Zenigata and Zenigata was like you know what um i'm going to like you know tear off this uh, arrest warrant if you help me capture rupan <laughs> and fujiko's like oh that's just perfect for me because uh you know like a uh, tricking rupan i do it every day so yeah don't you worry i'll i'll do it and that's why she got in and it was like an elaborate plan fujiko had i guess you know she like you know infiltrated the whole thing and made it seem as if he was helping Rupan, but at the same time he she was also kind of laying the trap to get Rupan <laughs> to capture him. So yeah, and um Okay, so they Fujiko gets captured at the beginning by the guy, uh the main guy. And the guy was like, Yeah, I'm going to capture Rupan, this is going to happen, I'm going to defeat him this that and he was like oh fujiko i know you are there like you know 
um you like you know you're also going to die but just enjoy seeing rupan die before you then i'm going to kill you or whatever <laughs> and <clears throat> as always rupan tricks him now i really like the way she did that he kind of substituted himself for a jigen while like you know making it seem as if rupan is still on the racetrack he infiltrated the um the place and that's why the guard was also down you know like they were like oh rupan is in the racetrack so obviously no one will come will come here and you know rupan won't be able to come here but well there you go rupan takes a disguise gets in as a plumber <laughs> my god uses the water to actually electrocute so many people and uh, yeah saves fujiko gets out of there now here's the thing um i uh, i think like you know like um I've, I've like i've been seeing rupan for quite a while and i'm talking about the movies and like there's one thing that i can see here like there's a, something that animals usually try not to do as much as possible that is showing like death you know like uh like obviously the the shows which are like you know something like that you know which are like gory and stuff obviously you see death there that's nothing new but other anime shows normal anime shows uh, even if someone is like you know like they, they don't actually actively show people dying or something which i feel like uh the movies also kind of did in a way but we did see deaths in rupan but i have to say this first episode the way they showed the deaths were something that i was not expecting i'm talking about the last scene where you know like rupan uses the bomb to completely blow up all the cars one after the other now i don't know like you know like i i kind of had this like you know all these movies that i've watched i've never seen rupan actively kill someone I think so yeah did he actively kill someone i can't remember i don't think he did and even if he did it was probably one single person who he had to kill in order to like you know uh, like you know defeat him or something something like that most probably i can't remember but here in this episode he actively kills so many people at the same time you know which is kind of interesting because um I feel like this is something that animals usually don't do, you know, especially uh, don't make the main character, the main protagonist do this, like, you know, actively kill characters like this, because, you know, like the main character, the main protagonist is supposed to be someone who is like, a, you know, like a symbol or a role model, whatever you call it. So that's why they don't actually use the main character to actively kill people, even if the main character is someone bad. You know like not bad as per bad but someone who is morally in the gray part or morally in the other side uh, other part of the compass but here like you know yeah like I, I was kind of surprised when rupan like at the beginning that's why i was like you know when they he put those uh, little things at the beginning i thought those were magnets like it never did even come into my mind that those were bombs because uh like you know i'm really not I've never seen anime do this, you know, like using the main character, the main protagonist to kill side characters like this. Okay, yeah, here it is. Like I'm, I'm, I'm able to understand what is actually, what I was actually surprised about. Main characters killing side characters like this. I've never seen that before. Main characters kill other main characters or other like, you know, villainous characters or whatever. Some characters who are like the main antagonist or their lackeys the main character or the main protagonist kills them i've seen a lot of animals like this anime kind of do that as well i've seen that but the thing thing that actually surprised me here is that he killed side characters or characters which are not even side characters these were mob characters he killed them just like that which i never see any anime doing you know <clears throat> like actively killing like not like you know like uh, something happens like uh, these type of things usually happens for example if like the main character blows up a place or something like people you know like indirectly die like that's obviously something happens we know that but i've never seen someone actively killing side characters not even side characters actively killing mob characters which kind of surprised me and I, I have to say like you know i've never seen something like this i think so but yeah that's why I, I thought those were magnets i never so thought those were bombs 
but yeah anyways um which is obviously like i have no problem with because you know like this is a show which is supposed to be mature you know like mature and uh rupan is a thief and like you know they're always like you know playing with their lives like you know anytime lupin can die if as if, as soon as his luck runs out something might happen to him like like that's pretty normal but you know like that's why obviously like you know they can kill a different guy like these characters they are definitely not characters uh like you know shown in anime protagonists who are like you know what I'll never kill someone. These characters are definitely not something like that. This is a mature show. So yeah, obviously like killing here and there by the main characters or by the uh, main protagonist is obviously something they will do, which I definitely have no problem with. But I was really surprised seeing him killing mob characters. I've never seen something like that in anime before. <laughs> but anyways, uh, okay. So yeah, that was that. And you know, the way he tricked them, all that thing. And he also anticipated uh, the boss, the other, the guy, uh, trying to kill him using the trophy, <laughs> and he just threw them to the, you know, all those people. And it was nice to see, like you know, Fujiko say that Zenigata, don't go there, you're going to die. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like I was not actually expecting Fujiko to work with Zenigata, but it does make sense because Zenigata probably baited her with, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> forgive your ar arrest warrant or tear it apart. Just help me get to Lupin. And she, I'm sure Fujiko thought that, you know what? Okay, fine. I'll do it. Because obviously, Lupin will be able to get out of that situation easily. So yeah, that's what happened. As soon as <laughs> Lupin gets captured, he somehow is managed, managed to escape. <laughs> and he somehow is behind you know fujiko's car and yeah that was that was funny i wonder how he got there like I, like in this scene we see rupan kind of you know like fujiko kind of kissing rupan in the cheek zenigata is kind of blankly looking in in front and then he starts dragging those car parts and rupan is nowhere to be found like I don't know how he managed that, you know, how Rupan managed to be, uh, like, you know, be behind uh, Fujiko's car. But yeah, this is Rupan we're talking about, so I'm sure he did something <laughs> to be able to be successful in doing that. But yeah, that was it. That was the first episode. So all right, um, let's start the second episode. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here and uh, yeah let's start the countdown so here we go three two one go all right This opening, uh, like, you know, uh, a few scenes are taken from the pilot film, isn't it? Yeah. Because the pilot film also showed this. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, damn. Whoa. Wait, what the? That's rude. It's the, it's the middle of the night. What the hell are you doing? Whoa. 
Who is this? The man they call the magician. Magician, you know you. Okay. What? <laughs> uh, I'm just chilling in the in the water. Oh boy! <laughs> Wait, what the? <laughs> oh, nice! Oh, <laughs> cool. Um, what happened to the octopus? What? Who? Who's singing this? Is that Fujiko? Oh, it is Fujiko. Oh. Wait, what? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. What is this song? It's weird. Whoa! Wait, what? Come on, Jigen. <laughs> he also caught that. Wait, he did not know. What? <laughs> oh, really? I did not know that. <laughs> Wait, whose house is this? They're living some... Oh my god, here we go. It's that guy. <laughs> oh! Oh my god! What the? Oh, Fujiko. Michael. <laughs> it does not. What? What? Wait, what the hell? <laughs> I don't know why, but this scene is quite funny. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, this is that guy who got shot and nothing happened to him. Oh my god, what the? Bulletproof? Okay, never mind. Yeah. What's up with this guy? Oh boy. Okay, so I'm sure it's Fujiko's. Oh no, he she has Fujiko as a hostage, I guess. She can just Oh Oh yeah, she she they he had this power. What the hell? How can you do that? Like... Huh. Yeah, what do you even do? Like, you know, like... 
probably douse him in water or something <laughs> or douse him in oil oh maybe goemon goemon yeah goemon can do something oh never mind i thought they were they were going to <laughs> go and look for goemon Film. What the? Oh my god. Also, oh, that's why she was burning and that. Um, I don't think that'll work. That's not They hit his head. What are you? Oh my god, Fujiwa did not know that. Yeah, what's up with him? Like, does he like have some kind of metal body or something? Like... Oh damn, what the hell? Oh my god, don't tell me she, he's going to smell her out. Okay, that, there you go. Okay, the dashboard. Is this some kind of a treasure map or something? What is this? The chemical formulas. Like organic bonds. It's kind of getting pushed back. Oh, grenade. Okay. Let's see if this works. I think he just got knocked. Oh my god, here we go. <laughs> What's up with this guy? <laughs> I think you probably need to cut him or something, like using Jigen. Uh, not Jigen, uh, Goemon's blade. Yep. <laughs> Wait, what? Weren't you saying that that's important to you? Oh my god. Run! Oh boy. Oh! Damn, bazooka! Um... If that even doesn't work, I don't know what will. How? Yeah, how do you even defeat this person? <laughs> Probably negotiate. I think that's only one way. Hmm. Oh, never mind. Let's see. Wow, he can even float. <laughs> Is this guy a magician or an illusionist? Like, that would make sense because the 
the name of the title was also something like that. But I don't know. Like if he's an illusionist, it would make sense because you know, like it was like a <laughs> an octopus. Okay. Yeah, he is a magician. Wait, why was she crying? <laughs> Too early. There you go. <coughs> nice. Okay, but what about the... But... Probably a glass or something or maybe... Uh, maybe a... Uh, I think it's a glass or something. Glass, there you go. But what about the um the bullets? He did not die when he was shot. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's Fujiko. <laughs> Trust me. Oh my god, here we go. <laughs> um... Okay. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> oh, yeah, it is a chemical chemical formula. There you go. Hmm. <laughs> okay, let's see what he does this time. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Is that a recorder? Yeah.
Oh, oh yeah, that's why she was crying before. Okay, there he is. Okay, so how did he do it? What was the trick about... Oh my god. Damn, he's hallucinating. <laughs> oh no. Oh nice. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Oh. What also he himself didn't know that high density membrane skin oh okay that's what it was wait so he he damn. Yeah, like the, uh, the impact. Weak point. Oh. Okay. Well, there you go. Jigen is there. Oh, he also has it. Oh my god, yeah. Okay. He's trying to jump in the water. Damn, the rope is also burning. Yeah. Okay. Damn. <laughs> well, wow. 
Oh no, here we go. Wait, so she... <laughs> okay, so she was actually trying to get the skin. Uh, I'm talking about the formula. That was her... Oh, wow. Hmm. Okay. Okay, that's it. All right, that was this episode. Okay, interesting. Um obviously like I, I kind of realized that he was a magician by the middle of it but uh, like the thing that really didn't make sense was the um indus industri uh, indestructible uh you know like body that he had so like even if he's a magician it's kind of impossible to do something like that like the you know the flame and the floating levitating that made sense but that's why I was kind of thinking like, is he really a magician or is it something else? But then we kind of get an idea what it actually is about. It's about like a new type of a, what do you call it? Thing, um, a new chemical formula, which made something which made it indestructible and uh, so strong that bullets, even uh, rocket launchers can pen penetrate it. So. <laughs> That was it. So now here's the thing. Uh, obviously, I kind of knew like Rupa never like, you know, introduces some thing which are like, you know supernatural or fantastical thing. And they never do that, except the whole thing with Mamo, I guess. You know, and there are a few exceptions, but they do not blatantly like you know put out uh, completely supernatural stuff like that. So obviously, like. At the beginning it made us feel as if maybe this is something supernatural maybe this guy is some kind of a supernatural being but it also had a reason behind it you know the reason behind his powers they explained it in the end what it was so yeah like everything kind of has like an answer in rupan and you know that's how we are accustomed to it so suddenly you know them introducing some kind of supernatural thing wouldn't even make sense so yeah and this guy obviously like here's the thing like i don't know like i have to say like i don't know the whole thing with fujiko in this episode it did seem she was genuinely concerned about paikal unlike how she does you know like for other you know people but he, she did say that i like you know i loved two people at the same time which obviously kind of i guess it kind of implies that it's uh, it's rupan and him now here's the thing here's the conf not confusion but here's the question here was that something that uh, Fujiko genuinely said or was that also another trick which she was basically tricking Paikal to make it seem as if she was concerned about him just to get hands on the formula now it wouldn't actually surprise me if, if all of this was like a trick that she did to Paikal like you know telling him that oh yeah I really like you that's why I don't want you to get you know involved with rupan because either you or he will die or something like that and like you know kind of buttering him up to get to the formula it wouldn't actually surprise me if it was something like that but i don't know like you know she, it genuinely did seem she was concerned because she was kind of crying in the not in the end but in the middle of it you know when she was getting trans like you know use, using the motorbike to get out of that place so yeah it it's, it's kind of interesting like i'm i don't know if we'll meet this guy again in the future because i doubt he's dead i don't think he's dead because they did not show his body like in anime you should never think someone is dead unless and until 
you see his death completely you know like you, you you see that he you know you see his body or something and sometimes that even doesn't like <laughs> you know mean that the person is dead like sometimes even those people that you see a body and who you feel like yeah this guy's genuinely dead sometimes due to some weird stuff they might also come back to life so this guy i doubt he's dead um probably somewhere in the future we'll meet him again so yeah like he did jump into a river so i'm guessing the fire kind of went out and maybe he washed up in some place some other place so yeah but anyways that's for some other episode but here as i was saying like in the end fujiko did make it seem as if like yeah she was doing everything for the formula but i don't know what her actual like you know deal was with this episode like she really acted a little bit weird in few parts which kind of does not uh what can i say which which does not um which is not actually normal for her like she usually does not act like this now here's the thing one thing i've been kind of um i don't know like i've, I've been noticing this uh even in the previous episode this episode as well fujiko's character in this like in this first season seems a lot normal which is <laughs> kind of surprising because fujiko is not like this as far as i'm accustomed to her with the you know in the movies fujiko is definitely not, not like this she generally seems concerned about lupan unlike the movies where that was never the case now here's another thing which i kind of realized I realized that in um, Mamo, you know, which is also something that was quite early in the series, uh, uh, I'm talking about the movie. I remember Fujiko also being kind of like this. So I'm guessing this whole thing of Fujiko, you know, being like she is still kind of the same, you know, like that type of a person who tricks and betrays Lupin for her own, like, you know, goals to meet. She's still like that. But even without, like, you know, even with that, there is an additional concern that she has for Rupan, which I can see in this episode as well. Unlike the movies later on, you know, the movies or the TV specials that I've seen later on, where I feel like the concern for Rupan is almost absent. Like, there's nothing <laughs> like that. Like, in Mamo, I also kind of, like, Mamo was, I think, the second movie that I saw about Rupan. And I remember I, me kind of talking about how even though like, you know, they kind of tricked each other, they like, you know, Fujiko is genuinely concerned and genuinely likes Rupan. But after that, like, you know, this whole thing kind of went away. I never after that, all the movies, I never saw this, you know, this whole thing before uh, that I kind of got to see in the previous movie, the first movie. So again, this seeing these episodes kind of is reminding me of that. I'm getting reminded of how in Mamo, Fujiko's personality was a little bit different to how she is after. Like here in this episode as well, we can see that she is genuinely concerned about Rupan. And even in the previous episode, um, she seemed like, you know, also seemed a bit, cons I don't know, like a few times, it, like, I can get that feeling. So yeah, like obviously, like, you know, I, I have to say, um, this is good you know like i i like the whole like you know like fujiko showing her human side as well i like that fact but i feel like um the the way they do fujiko's character in the up like you know in the future episodes or the future movies where there's this type of uh daredevil in fujiko where she genuinely isn't concerned about anything even rupan's safety because she knows that somehow rupan will be okay you know this thing I feel like this thing is a lot like I prefer this a, a bit more because I don't know like what can I say it, 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 it it's like a weird type of a um, trust that she places on Rupan it's, it's a weird trust where she feels like you know like as if she can like shoot Rupan in his head but she feels like Rupan will somehow be able to get out of that situation also like th th that is the level of trust or weird type of uh, bond that she and Rupan has in the uh, like in the future uh, movies that I've seen. Like like it wouldn't surprise like you know like even if she shoots Rupan in front of him, she in her heart would think that yeah Rupan would be able to get out of this. 
that's why she's generally not concerned about Rupan because she like you know like they, there's this weird trust and bond between them and I feel that's that's a lot more interesting than like you know the, the way it was done in the previous episode I'm not saying I don't like this but I feel like that type of a daredevil mentality is something <laughs> Which I I guess I kind of got accustomed to it. That's basically it. Because as I said, Mamo kind of did this before. You know, like Fujiko's personality, like you know, the genuine caring personality, uh, like you know, hidden behind the you know daredevil personality. Mamo did that, and after that, it kind of went away. Like there was no concern about Lupin after that after those movies. So. I feel like I got accustomed to Fujiko's personality like this. So suddenly, like, you know, now that I'm coming back to the previous uh, episodes, the first few episodes, again, seeing that type of Fujiko, I'm a little bit like, you know, like, <laughs> what can I say? Like, not accustomed to it again. So, yeah, I'll, I'll also probably get used to this again, you know, like this type of, of Fujiko. But yeah, and uh, I can also see a few uh, change in all the other characters as well, like Rupan. Rupan is a bit serious, I can see. No, he goofs around still, but I feel like the movies that I've seen, he's a bit too goofy. <laughs> you know, like, I think. And here, I feel like he's a little bit serious. There's a little bit seriousness um, in him. Uh, so, yeah, like, since these are, like, you know, the initial episodes, I'm guessing that's why, like, you know, there's this type of a change in personality. Now... I have to say, like, you know, like, I enjoyed both of them. And this is also, like, nice in its own way. Like, seeing Fujiko being concerned about Rupan. <laughs> that's, <laughs> really, that, that is surprising. And I, I think, like, yeah, like, it'll get a little bit of time to get used to this whole thing. <laughs> but did, this is also nice in its own way. Anyways, I've been talking about Fujiko for quite some time. Um, all right, so... Here in this episode, as I was saying, um, and oh, another thing I'm watching as I'm watching this, I can understand is uh, like, you know, I've seen a lot of people saying that the episodes are completely standalone, you know, like it has no connection with the previous episodes, and I can understand what they were trying to say. The previous episode and this episode has nothing in common. I don't even know if they're happening one after the other or not, you know, like it feels like, like a new story. You know, like a completely new story. Like, you remember the short stories that uh, like books used to have? Like, there's like a book with, for example, eleven or twelve short stories in it with different characters. The only difference here is that the characters are all the same, but the stories are completely different with something happening in completely different circumstances. Like, for example, in this episode, we suddenly get introduced to this guy, Paikal. I think that was his name. Suddenly, without even any kind of, uh, like, you know, nothing, like, he suddenly pops up and we see that Fujiko was with him. And then, like, you know, like, he burned her or whatever and she came out with the film and all that stuff. Like, this has nothing in common to the previous episode that we saw where we were in that, you know, racing thing. So, like, these are, like, you know, like, not, these are not even standalone episodes. These are completely different things. Like, one is happening in one place, another is happening in another place. Like, these are completely different stories. Like, I am accustomed to these type of storytelling with Jojo, you know, Jojo's Bizarre Adventures, where they kind of do this. Like, you know, like, like every episode has, like, its own story. But in Jojo's Bizarre Adventures, it still follows a pattern, a chronological pattern. Like, yeah, like, some, like, you know, in, especially in part three, where the crew is going from one place to another. While going, like, you know, they're experiencing different stories. Like, it's kind of like that. But Rupan here in this uh, first season, it doesn't have that even at all. They're not even, like, you know, in any chronological order. I feel like these are like scattered stories which are just, uh, like, you know, put in episode one, two, and three. Which is, I have to say, quite interesting because I don't think I've ever seen an anime like this. You know, which has like this type of completely standalone episodes with something different happening in episode one. And then it's completely different in episode two. I don't think I've seen an anime like this before. No, this is the first time. So yeah, it's interesting. Like I'm guessing episode three will again be something completely different, which has no connection to this episode. <laughs> so yeah, like I was thinking like, you know, like I, I kind of wondered like, you know, when in the comment section, I used to read that these, these uh, like, you know, uh, the first few seasons uh, were completely standalone, had nothing to do. And you can just, you know, start from season four or something. You won't be missing much. 
and i can understand why now you know like like yeah now that i'm seeing this i can understand why so it's nice you know like it's nice to see like a show like this where you can just start from whatever you want to you know you can you can start from season two as well you won't be missing out in much stuff so it's interesting like sometimes like you know like sometimes there's like anime which has like this type of like 200 300 episodes and people usually are scared to get into them because they need to watch the first few episodes you know first few 300 400 episodes and then you'll get to the main good part or something that's why people kind of get scared and don't get into these type of long stories long animes but i don't think rupan has that problem you can start from part four and you won't have any problem at all so yeah and like, you know i was thinking like i was i had this thing in my mind what i was thinking like i'm completely skipping part two and three so will it be okay now that i'm watching this i'm like you know what yeah it will be fine i won't be missing out on much and it won't be a problem i won't it, there won't be problems like yeah i won't understand season four because i've not watched season two or season three that problem won't be there now that i'm watching season one i can understand how this is going to go so yeah that's good but yeah anyways okay so <clears throat> yeah this guy paikal um he's a magician and all that now i don't even know if, the, if this guy has like a proper introduction or something like they kind of introduce him out of the blue and it seems as if fujiko had something with him so i don't even know if there is like a backstory of this guy or something how he, he and fujiko met and whatnot but yeah probably there is maybe in the future episodes we're going to see who knows but yeah now obviously rupan is able to like you know crack the code or whatever he's able to understand what is happening he easily is able to um like you know uh, replicate the tricks for example the flamethrower trick and the glass door like you know glass uh, uh, levitating trick but he was kind of struggling with the other one where the bullet is penetrating using bazooka and nothing happens to him <laughs> he, he hits his head <laughs> and suddenly everything kind of like you know comes together and he's able to understand the formula and i think he replicates that formula and is able to make that so he puts that skin or whatever tries to like you know goes on a duel with him or whatever one versus one with paikal and the only thing that kind of was a little bit problematic is when paikal shot him in point blank range now obviously like you know like like you guys like you know, i'm sure you guys know that bullets like have this type of uh, velocity so even if it's not lethal hitting getting hit by a bullet you know even like you know even if you are wearing a bulletproof jacket hitting getting hit by a jack uh, bullet it won't be lethal but you're definitely going to get a huge impact wherever the bullet hits and it's immense so point blank range bullet it's going to mess you up completely that's why rupan started hallucinating completely and he just he just went like you know like blacked out for a second he just went uh, like you know, he he felt as he felt as if he went into the water and like he was looking at like some mermaid fujiko or whatever those octopus coming out he was completely hallucinating while like you know jigan kind of helps him out that kind of that was the bigger problem here he kind of got messed up by that but after that everything kind of went smoothly he just goes in and he's like yeah i know what you're doing so and that was a gamble i have to say like you know you remember when uh Michael was kind of pointing the gun at his head he was sweating he was like will this work if this doesn't work i'm dead so <laughs> yeah and then when he got you know like confirmed that yeah this thing works he then goes in and with full confidence he defeats paikal and we don't know what happened to paikal paikal is down in the water and as i said unless and until you see a body anything can happen this guy's probably alive and probably will pop out in some other episode so yeah and then in the end we see fujiko trying to you know like <laughs> like saying that rupan you, you you do remember that formula don't you and <laughs> <laughs> when she realizes that rupan like you know won't be able to help her <laughs> she just whacks him and just goes away <laughs> my god that was okay now this this is what the part that actually confuses me like i'm feeling as if like in this kind of shows that fujiko's probably trying to get that formula but 
it also does show that she was genuinely concerned about Rupan and that guy and that whole like you know tape recording of her saying that my problem like you know my fault is like I fell in love with two person at the same time these seems really genuine so I'm really not sure what to think of this was that really a trick to get into Paikal's like you know heart so that she could grab the formula or was that genuine I think it's a mixture of both who knows but we'll see because one thing I'm well, obviously everyone knows and everyone is pretty sure is that she genuinely is concerned about Rupan even if there is a little bit you know there is genuine concern as I said like you know like this concern kind of goes away in the future episodes and future movies where we don't see that but especially in the first few episodes and the first like you know older episodes I feel this thing is a little, little bit more prevalent where we can kind of see that Fujiko genuinely is concerned about Rupan and genuinely likes him so yeah and uh, we'll see like I, this is the thing that really I, 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 is fascinating about this show and also about Fujiko because um, her personality is so so different from anime characters like it's it's so different and it's so confusing and it's it's, it's a mystery like what she thinks nobody gets to know and there, there is a complexity in within her like you know in her heart and how to like you know in her personality which I feel like it's one of the best way that a character can be made and she's she, like you know the way like you know the author made Fujiko is like you know is very what can I say like um, amazing and it's, it's a really job well done because she's definitely one of those characters who is very mysterious and even after Lupin has been going for so long I'm sure even in the future episodes like you know in, in the episodes that are currently ongoing I'm sure nobody can predict what Fujiko is going to do next. Like that's what's interesting about Fujiko, like her unpredictability and the weird relationship that she has with Rupan, which Rupan also acknowledges. <laughs> God. And uh, yeah, that was it. That was this episode. Um, these were my reactions of the pilot film, episode one and episode two of Rupan. And from the next week, I'm going to do it in a similar fashion, two episodes every week. So just like this, a little discussion and then episode one and uh, two episodes. So yeah, so that's it guys. Thank you guys for watching. This was my reaction to the first two episodes of Rupan uh, and the pilot film. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. As I said, I plan on uh, putting out Rupan reactions every week and I plan on continuing this up until season six. Season 2 and 3 will be done in a different fashion where I won't react to each and every episode but I'll be reacting to the episodes that you guys will recommend. Maximum 2 or 3. You know, every uh, per person. So it, I'm going to do it something like that. So yeah, so if you guys are interested be sure to subscribe and yeah and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know and uh, yeah I'll definitely check them out. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of Rupan 3 Reactions. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.